my name is Ben Brownlee from Curious Turtle and in this tutorial we're going to be doing a 3D match move on this footage using PF Ho and we're going to be looking at another couple of techniques on how we can refine our match move before we bring the data into After Effects. Now once in After Effects what I'm going to do is just quickly show how we can generate realistic looking shadows on our ground plane. Okay, so let's move into PF Ho and get started. Now in PF Ho, we're gonna be working through the workflow down here using the buttons down at the bottom. And in this shot, we're gonna be looking at studio space here. So let's just load that in. And I've got the wizard here just to ask me a couple of questions to set our shot up. Uh, is the cat, how is the camera moving? Do we have free motion? Well, let's take a look at our shot. Yeah, we've got a small track moving on. Uh, that's free motion. The nodal pan would be if we, for example, had the camera mounted on a tripod head and we're just sort of panning around uh, from a static position. Is the camera zooming? Yes or no? No, it's not zooming. So we've got a constant focal length and hit finish. So moving from left to right here, we have our calculate lens distortion here. Now I have already done this for this footage. So we are working on already undistorted footage. Now I wanna just play this through uh, for you. So we're just gonna play it down at the bottom here. Now what we have here is a scene with some camera movement in it, and we also have some movement within the scene itself. Uh, so if we take a look at this uh, billowing banner on our right hand side here, this is gonna throw off the uh, track. So if we try to calculate this scene as it stands here, all of this movement over here is gonna be picked up and, uh, and used by the trackers and completely throw off our camera track. So what we have to do is remove this area here from the equation. Now, the best place to do it is at this uh, is at this stage before we even start doing any auto tracking. So I'm just gonna click on this button here to add in our image mask. And this is a mask I've just generated up. Uh, it's a black and white mask. Very, very simply done. You can see it's a very, very simple shape just animated across there. And it's so simple that we do miss out on, uh, on some bits here. So we are gonna have to uh, pay special attention to those areas a bit later. So now we've got this masked out here, let's hit our track features button and track the features through. And you'll notice that wherever we have our mask, none of the features are going to be generated or uh, tracked. So I'm just gonna let that calculate through quickly. Cool, and now those features are tracked, we can come in and we can start to uh, weed out the ones that aren't gonna be very helpful to us when we start tracking. So Basically, all of the ones where the points start to bounce up and down, like here, and we can generally see using the uh, traffic light system that's going on here. This movement here looks very, very noisy, going through the green to the, uh, then to the, the yellow, then to the red. So I can get rid of that one there. All these down here are pretty good. Whereas this one here, find it again, this one here, very small one and it's just sort of bouncing around all over the place. Cool, so let's have a look there. Again, very, very small ones. Now the advice that I give on this, oh, let's have a, let's have a look here. We've got this one here, which is, uh, you know, if we have a little look through it, it's moving. So it's moving consistently here. Then as the uh, stall goes in front of it, it sort of, drifts and stops being useful. So I'm just gonna get rid of that there. Cool, and now I'm just gonna do the final whiz through check just to make sure that there's nothing stray going on. And this one just lets me see whether I've got any, that have got the telltale red markings at some point, or whether the, um, the actual line that it's showing me appears either inconsistent or is unnecessarily sort of jumpy and noisy, because there is a fair amount of noise in this footage here. And I know that uh, I can quite happily cull a good number of these points and still end up with a an as accurate or even more accurate track at the end of the day. 
Cool, and so when I'm uh, happy with that, I'm gonna go on to our next stage, which is estimate focal length and scene orientation. Let's find a good place for this. So what this is gonna do, it's just gonna aid our scene orientation here. And it does this by showing us our little cube. So I'm gonna position one of the points in the far corner here. I'm gonna move this up to the wall here, bring it up there. Let's see if I can find the edge of the uh, the wall here. It's quite tricky with this footage because it is fairly low light at that particular area. There we go, and I'm fairly confident with that. And of course, we can go in and tweak that all a bit later, so it's it's fine as it is. Uh, and let's now calculate our camera movement. Of course, that's generated up our point cloud here. Let's just play that through and check for consistency. That's looking pretty good. So what I want to do now is I want to make sure that my origin point here is sat on the floor. So when I move this into After Effects, I know that position 000, zero, zero is gonna be on the floor. Uh, whereas at the moment, 000, zero, zero, which is our origin, is sort of just lifted halfway up the floor uh, in line with this lamp here. So let's pick one of our little points here. So let's come over here to our adjust uh, scene position and orientation. Select the point on the floor, hit spacebar, move our origin to feature here. And let's just have a little look through that. That's looking pretty good. Okay. Cool, so I can now come in and delete all of the features that I don't need, which is going to be pretty much all of them. I might keep one in the background just to uh, to figure out that Z space position for that. And same with the light here. I'm going to keep one on each of the lights to figure that out. I don't even need to keep our origin point here because I know that that's going to be zero, zero, zero. That was the whole point of keeping that. And let's keep one of the points on our clamp there and one of the points on our light there. I don't need you. Cool, so if I export out that data again now and just import that back in, so that's the same studio space .ma movie, you can now see it's only taken in those eight tracker points that were left. So let's bring in our studio space footage over the top here and see how that all uh, all works out. Let's fit this up to 100% now. Cool, and that's all working very nicely. If the null objects are a little bit big for you, we can just come in and scale them down. And at this point that has no, um, no effect for me because all I'm gonna be using these uh, null objects for in this particular exercise is as um, uh, position markers to figure out where they are relative in, uh, in Z-Space. Cool, and in fact, I don't even need those for the moment, so I'm gonna turn all of those off. I'm gonna create a new solid, so lay a new solid, uh, 200 by 200 pixel solid here. Let's just uh, turn on our 3D switch here, hit P to open up the position, and set everything to zero here. So now you can see that actually it is moving as it should do. If I scale it down properly, there we go, you can see it's moving in the exact same plane as we need it to. Now I'm gonna use this uh, white solid here as our ground plane, and we're only gonna be using it to catch the shadows that are gonna be generated by the other objects we're gonna insert into the scene. So I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna hit R, to bring up our um, orientation here, and I'm going to put my X orientation to 90%, and I'm gonna scale this back up again. There we go, scale it right the way up. Cool, and it's looking fairly ugly at the moment, but that's okay, this will all look, uh, all look good later on. And let's bring in some text. So it's come in, and I'm just gonna write texty text. And again, turn on the 3D switch here, come to our position, zero, zero, zero on that. 
and then scale that down there. Now I can happily reposition this in X and Y and know that it's still going to keep the same relative motion to our origin point here because that's the uh, that's the Z space that we're working with. If on the other hand, let's uh, turn on our null object here. If on the other hand, I wanted it to go right to the back here by the um, by the lamp at the back or the wind machine at the back. I know that if I type in Z space of 196.1, it's going to follow that stand instead. Cool, let's keep that at zero. And hit R again to bring up the rotation and just orient that slightly differently there. Cool. Let's turn our white solid again. So now I'm going to add a couple of lights. So layer new, light here. Uh, let's make this a point light. Make sure it casts shadows. Hit OK. And our position, well, guess where that's going to be? Yep, yeah, zero, zero, zero to begin with. And then we can bring that up and you can see that starts to light things up here. Now, you can see we told the light to cast shadows, but we're still not getting any shadows down on the ground plane here. Now, why is that? Well, one of the things is we actually need to turn on shadows in the material options here on our text. So if I turn shadows on there, everything starts to get a little bit slower. But we are now casting shadows. You can see down here we are now casting shadows on the ground. Cool, so I'm going to just position that somewhat artistically relevant. We've still got the big white solid not quite playing along with us. So let's come into the material options on the white solid. And we want it to not cast shadows. We want it to accept shadows. And we want to turn accept lights off. So now we've just got the white solid with a shadow on top there. And I can come in and change my blend mode here to multiply. And we've got a little shadow going along there. You can see it is spreading towards the banner over here, which uh, is something we don't really want. So we can just happily mask this out because the banner and the ground share the same relation. Whoops, undo that. Because uh, the banner and the ground share the same sort of uh, spatial relationship. Let's just invert that. There we go. Now, if we wanted to, we could also build up another solid here that would represent this plane here and then have our um, shadows also being able to be uh, projected onto this sheet here. Of course, let's create one more little light. Let's come up layer, new light. Let's make this a spotlight this time. Again, cast shadows. Now, the spotlight has a position. And if I hit Shift and A, I can bring up the position and the point of interest here. Point of interest is going to be our text. So let's check out the position on our texty text and let's reset the position on the lamp to our point of origin. So now I can work on a known object here. So I set my point of interest to minus 25, which is going to be the base of the text here. And let's bring this lamp slightly forward. If we wanted to, we could also light this realistically and have simulations of our lights that we actually can see within the image, but that's not what we're going for right at this very moment. Let's bring the intensity down and the cone angle right the way down as well. And let's quickly render that out. Cool, that's it for now. I hope that's given you some good information about uh, when you should use imported mask into PFHO uh, to block out any sort of movement within the frame that isn't part of the camera movement and what you can do to refine the data before you export out your final 3D match move. And then once we take that into After Effects and start to bring in realistic shadows using After Effects built in light and using the match move data we get from PFHO to generate up our ground plane that's going to be used just to catch the shadows generated by the other elements in the scene. My name is Ben Brownlee from Curious Turtle. I hope you found this useful and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks a lot.